Everybody and welcome to Sports and Mercado Live and this one tonight is for the Bahamian people that I work for. It's been 25 exciting years. Well, the high school volleyball season starts September 19th and the grandma of phys ed teachers and coaches will be ready to play ball. High school and primary school phys ed teachers and coaches are participating in a three-day volleyball course and clinic at the Jack Haver Gymnasium. The course is coordinated by the Bahamas Volleyball Federation and the instructor is... Lorenzo Miller. We're going through the rules of the game and also we're going to also have a clinic for the coaches to get basic fundamentals of coaching their kids, the basic fundamentals of um, the game of volleyball. And after that there's a, a written exam and also there's a, a practical exam where they have to then show us basically what they've learned. And then from that the Ministry of Education sort of let's say will certify you now to say to be able to um, coach the game of volleyball to the school. The Bombers Volleyball Federation is adamant about the development of the game of volleyball and the implementation of an efficient feeder system. So the idea basically really is to go throughout basically all of the islands, especially where we have physical ed teachers teaching the game of volleyball so we can bring up the standard because I think um, what the Federation has realized also is that their feeder program is more or less not getting, I guess, the quality of players that they really want and to develop. So in their feeder program, they notice that the, the level is a bit lower than they had expected. So this is basically an opportunity to try to bring that level up so that by time is when they get to the feeder program within the federation, you know, they'll always be like a, a particular standard and they can just move from there. The Grand Bama Secondary School Athletic Association President Kenton Roll was taken by the interest of the coaches. Oh, our volleyball season is coming up. It's right around the corner. It's about a week and a half away. And it's very important for coaches to know the rules, all the coaching procedures, you know. A lot of times we coach these games and a lot of people are not knowledgeable about the sport. You understand? And like I said, course certificates courses like this, the one we have here today, tomorrow and Saturday, is very important in terms of development of our kids. Now, Sports Administrator with the Ministry of Education, Norris Bain, says the course and clinic is just the beginning of plans for the future development here in the Northern Bahamas. Not only the Grand Mama community, but Bimini, Abaco, and of course, Grand Key to partner with us. And what we're going to do, we're going to attempt to pull off a, a Northern Bahamas championships between the schools in Bimini, Grand Bahama, Abaco, and the high school, the, the all eight school there in uh, Grand Key. Bring them all into Grand Bahama. And we're going to have a Northern Bahamas Championship on the 28th and the 29th and name it after two um, outstanding volleyball players, Oriel Knowles and Rosina Nesbitt. But we want the public to come out and support this. And then we'll move into softball, do a certification in softball, and then have the same, repeat the same thing this time, like to take the Northern Bahamas Championship for softball into the island of Abaco. And just a reminder that the Abaco Softball Association playoffs continues tonight. The ladies play first with Ed Murphy Town. Well, my Carolina Panthers lost to the Denver Broncos last night, and tomorrow we're going to say goodbye to a true Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Alvin Andrew Lightborn, a.k.a. Ellie, was a Dallas Cowboy fan like no other. He pulled out no stops when it came to his Dallas Cowboys, and those that knew him shared some special moments. Byron Boozy Roll and the Sunday football crew had an appreciation for a football fan like Ellie. I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I will miss him. That's the only man I know in my life who hold his head up where the Cowboys down by 100 points or by a million points. He's the only Cowboy fan I know that hold his head up all the time. He's a real true fan. Ellie was just an awesome guy. Always one who tried to make everybody else smile. I personally feel, had Ellie gone in the comedian field, which is what he normally did, he would have put plenty of those other guys out of business. You're going to miss him. He always just be here every Sunday. Um, boy, he's going to really be missed. He's really going to be missed. Um, boy, when, when we play, he's here. He, he more a dolphin hater, but... When Dallas playing, he's on the spot. Every time the Dolphin play, if we win, I call him. If we lose, he call me. And if I don't answer the phone, he call me all night. So it's going to be hot. That's the kind of friend he was to me. Candace De Gregory and Ellie had a very special relationship that went beyond friendship. I'm going to really miss him, you know, and Lofton. And Ellie always said to me, Candy boy, I hope you don't die before us. Because you hold our most dearest secrets. 
I'm here it is. You know, it's come to pass at early time before me and you know and I I just miss him so much. Ellie will be laid to rest Saturday. He was 52 years young. When I saw Mr. Lightburn, Ms. Lightburn, you know, but I was not able to go back because it's so emotional for me uh, to see Marsha lost. And those, it's just, it's just too much for me. Rest, my cousin. We will always miss you in our hearts. We're always going to have you in our thoughts. First down and goal, Dallas. Ellie has the ball. And now you're gonna be with me for the last one.